Hi, welcome to the eighth video of a drop of Excel. For anyone who has come directly to this video, please go on and look at the introduction first and then the first seven videos and then jump right into it to learn further. Let's continue. So we've done a lot of things now and now we'll move on to a topic called restrict and protect. So whatever files you have been creating until now, you know, whatever we've learned, you've been using some formulas, some functions, and a lot of other tricks like sort filter, etc. Right now, how do you restrict certain data entry is what we will start learning. So during data entry itself, you avoid mistakes, right? So the first one that we're going to take is how to make a drop down. Now, what I have done is there is a sheet called drop down lists. So I've made two lists. Okay. One for the company name, which is your customer and one for a SKU name, which is a product name, right? So we've been dealing with fitness equipment. So this is the, these are the products. Now the point is that instead of yoga mat, suppose if you type while typing the name of the product yoga mats with the S at the end or a speed rope, you type it as a speedy rope or something like that. Then while generating reports, you will get a problem where you will get two kinds of products. One will be a speed rope and one will be a speedy rope, right? So your actual sales reports will not match correctly and unnecessarily you have to check what you're entering data right? properly or not. So to avoid such things, what you can do is you can create a drop down. Now, what is a drop down? Now, for example, you go online and you try to fill a form. Generally, you see a drop down in a field called country, right? You never are able to type India or USA. Generally, it's a drop down. Similarly, here we will create two drop downs, one for a company name, that is a customer name and one for a SKU name. So the example that we are taking is a invoice format. Let's say you're preparing this invoice format. What you want is in the company name and in the SKU name, these, you want these drop downs. You don't want the person to type it manually at all. Okay. So I'm going to first create for company name. So I'm going to keep my cursor there. Go to the data tab. Go to an option called data validation. When I click there, this opens up. Now, what does it say? Allow what? So you want to allow only a list. So here now I can type a comma B comma C. Okay. It's comma separated. When I press OK, what I get is three values A, B, C. So I can select from A or B or C. I cannot type something else. It will not allow me to type. Right. So I can only select. But I cannot sit and type all those customer names here with comma separation, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my cursor in this source or I can click here so that this box gets shortened. I can go to drop down lists. Now observe here. It's showing that sheet reference and I will select these names. Mind you do not select the header company name. Otherwise that will also come as an option in the list. I'll click on this again. And now that we are done, we'll press OK. So now what it creates is the list that was created there. So you are able to select from that list. Now, if I go there and I sort this list A to Z, right? See the sorting changed here, right? It became A to Z. Automatically that sorting will reflect here as well. Easy. This has also got sorted in that same order. So you don't have to do anything manually here. You just have to give the reference and whatever then you choose here that will reflect in the drop down there. If you want more values, instead of just putting to 10, you can let's say put it to 15. So what happens is here you will get some blanks because it's up to 15. But tomorrow, if you add another customer, so I'm just writing one more customer automatically that one more customer appears here. Interesting. So this is how you create a drop down in Excel. Now what we will do is we will create a drop down for the SKU name. Now here you had created only in one single cell here you wanted five cells. So you select all the five cells, then go to data validation list and in source you choose these. 
again you can sort them if you want up to you when you press ok that has got applied to all the five cells so in all the five cells now you've got the drop down interesting this is how you can create a drop down in excel very very useful so that you don't have to type speed rope at all so you save time in typing plus you do not make any mistake in typing you just have to select that's about it moving on how to limit data entry to certain cells only now this is a little longer process so i would suggest you to kind of make a note of this somewhere in your notepad or somewhere because this is a series of steps which you have to follow right so what does it say how to limit data entry to certain cells only now as a format what i have done here is i have created the invoice format and whatever is marked in gray that is where you have to enter data everything in white you do not have to enter anything so if you observe the due date is not in white why because that is already selected plus 30 so i'm saying there's 30 days as a due date from the original date invoice because the terms is payable in 30 days the subtotal is an addition of this then the tax 18 percent and then total so i'm saying all this does not need to be data entry these are our formulas hence they are in white whatever is in gray that is where you want to allow the person to enter data okay so first what we are going to do is we are going to make a setting so the first thing is configure the settings okay then second is apply or activate the settings okay these are the two steps that you have to follow how to do these two steps we will see now so first is configuring the settings now what do you mean by configure so select all the gray cells that you want to allow the person to edit right so i've selected all of them so i use the control key and with my mouse i just selected one by one my control key is pressed right now i will right click and go to an option called format cells we've seen this before but instead of this tab now we're going to work on the last tab which is protection here if you observe by default it is locked okay so your question will be if it was locked how was i able to type right i created those drop downs etc how was i able to do that it is because the configuration is locked but that configuration that setting is not applied yet we have not activated that setting yet see the second step apply activate the settings that is not done yet so i'm going to remove the lock because i want to allow entry in these cells and i press ok so now again if you have observed everything else would be locked because by default everything is locked so if i go here see this is locked i don't need to touch that correct i don't need to touch that because i don't want the person to change this i only want the person to change the gray cells so i'm going to keep everything else locked i have only made the gray cells unlocked is enough now what we are going to do to apply the settings is go to the review tab and click on protect sheet when you click on protect sheet it asks you for a password but below that it asks you if somebody does not have the password still what all can they do so if you want to allow certain things to be done even if for somebody who does not have the password you can tick on those things and then you give a password for now i'm giving abc please understand that you got to remember what password you give to be able to edit the file later if you ever need to so i'm giving the password abc it will ask me to re-enter i re-entered now here you see there is a button called unprotect sheet means the sheet is now protected so if i go to any white cell and i try to change that it is not going to allow me it says it is on a protected sheet but if i go here to physiana and i change the company to sure gm it allows me so i'm going to start entering let's say the address is chupon avenue the phone is plus one what are the number email is abc at gmail.com and the website is again www.something.com when i put the date let's say i put 
31st March 2020 automatically it brings up 30th April 2020 invoice number 100 contact person address all this you can fill up right so here also you could have put a formula instead of having to manually you can do a price into quantity and this will have been filled automatically so that is how you can restrict data entry in certain cells only by using this protect sheet option if you ever want to do something else you just click on this and protect sheet it will ask you for a password you enter the password that you gave earlier and you're back your configuration still remains but the setting that you activated has got deactivated so the first step still remains as it is only you have deactivated it so the moment you want to activate again just click on protect sheet and enter a password it will get activated all right with that we are done with 8.2 moving to 8.3 allow only whole numbers greater than thousand in certain cells so what does it mean in a certain cell or cells you want to allow only numbers whole numbers more than thousand so you should not be able to enter 999 or even 1000 it should be more than thousand so this i'm going to take as an example in the invoice number cell all right what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the data tab and data validation. I've kept my cursor on the invoice number. Here I'm saying it should always be a whole number and it should always be greater than 1000. Why? Because my series of invoice numbers have to always start with 1001. That is a method that we are following in the company, for example. So I don't want somebody to enter a number below 1001 or basically greater than 1000. This should be entering only greater than 1000. When I enter this and I try to put 250, it does not allow me. When I try to put 1000, it does not allow me. 1002, yes, it allows me. Interesting. So this way, we saw whole number. Like this, there are many other options. Now you've got the logic. You can start researching more on this. Just try to use these and you will understand how to use them. I've explained the basic logic to you how this entire thing works. All right. So that was about working with cells and looking at protecting the sheet. Now we are going to look at how to protect the entire file with a password. So sometimes you get an Excel file from somewhere. And when you try to open it, it quickly asks you for a password. If you don't know the password, it doesn't allow you to open the file at all. Right. So we're going to learn how to do that. So I will go to file. I will go to save as. And I will go to more options. Here you will see in the tools option, an option called general options. And I will click there. When I click there, I get this option of password to open and password to modify. So if I put a password to open, whenever I will send this file to somebody and he tries to, he or she tries to open it, they will get this option to enter the password. If they do not know the password, they will not be able to open the file. Password to modify. If I only give a password to modify, then somebody will be able to open the file, but whenever they try to modify it, they will be asked for a password. If they do not know the password, they will not be able to modify the file. If I put passwords in both, then somebody will need to enter a password to open it and also another password to modify it. It can be the same password, but it doesn't make sense. So either you give only the password to open or you give two different passwords for both. So this is how you can protect your file to uh, not allow somebody to open it without a password. Thank you guys. If you have any question, please, please put it in the comment section below. Whatever you liked, if you learned something new, please leave a comment below and do like, do share and do subscribe the video so that it can reach as many people as possible. Thank you so much. Looking forward to see you in the ninth video. So there are four more to go. Looking forward to see you in all of them.